Matter and Thread are slowly gaining some popularity, a little bit more support, and Home Assistant has really been trying to improve the entire integration with Thread and Matter within their ecosystem. But before, the best way to get a Thread border router integrated with Home Assistant was to get the SkyConnect or the ZBT-1. And unfortunately, with all of the tariff situations that have been happening recently, the ZBT-1 has been a little bit more difficult to get your hands on. It has recently just come back in stock, but for the past two to three months, it has not been in stock. It's been on back order. And so I wanted to try to find a solution as to a way that I could still get a thread border router integrated into my system, not have to wait months to get anything to be able to do that. And what I did was I ended up picking up Akara's new Hub M100. And we're gonna try to get this thing integrated in my home assistant. We're gonna see how easy it is to get something that is matter supported integrated into home assistant using this. And the reason for that is I'm actually working on another video with some matter supported products. And during their whole setup, I ended up running into an issue where the thread border router that I ended up borrowing for that video, which was a Google Home Nest Hub, uh, the second gen, the one with the display, I was running into a lot of issues and I'm really hoping that this ends up solving my problem. So I'm gonna go ahead, get this thing plugged into my system. We'll get it integrated into Home Assistant and then we'll try to get the device integrated into Home Assistant using Matter and seeing how well it works. So first, let's go ahead and get this thing unboxed and see what's in the box. All right, so here's our box and it's the Akara Hub M100. We can see that it says thread border router right there. Matter supported, works with Apple Home, Alexa, Google Home. We have just some uh, recycling stuff on there. Zigbee and Thread Hub, because this can also be used for Zigbee, which is cool. It's got a 210 degree adjustable shaft. Just, it can pivot forwards and backwards. And then we have some product specs here and just a bit more information here, nothing too much. Let's go ahead and get this thing opened. It's not really gonna be much in here. It's just a USB. So we have the device itself in here. It's pretty large. So hopefully I can find the space for it on my home assistant PC. But we have that degree of rotation. We have a button here for pairing, which is cool. And then we have the home kit QR code, and then we have another QR code above that, and some information in different languages here, and then we have some documentation. So let me go plug this into the system downstairs, get it passed through to my home assistant, and we'll see if we can get integrated in the system. All right, so the M100 actually can't be connected to the home assistant directly via USB. It has to be integrated like any other Matter device would. So we're going to go ahead and in the Akara app, unfortunately, you do have to go ahead and set up an account for this. Get the Akara app. We're going to go in here. We're going to go to the plus icon up top here. Add accessory. We're going to go down and we're going to find Hub M100. Next step. Click on that. Select a Wi-Fi. This is my IoT Wi-Fi. Next step. And it's all set up. All right, so now that you've got that in Akara, you are gonna to wanna to go into your hub and go into your settings. Go down and make sure that you have the most recent update for your firmware. And then what you're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna add the Akara hub into Home Assistant. Now, I did this really quickly offline and it added and now I've been having trouble re-adding, so let's see if it works. But what you wanna do is we're gonna go ahead and do third-party matter ecosystems. We're gonna do matter pairing code. Now, if you're gonna do this on the same device and you're not using two devices like I am, you can just do copy pairing code. Then in Home Assistant, we're gonna to go to your devices and integrations. You're gonna to go to add integration, add a matter device, know it's new. And then if you're using the code, you're just gonna hit setup without QR code, but we're gonna do it with a QR. We're gonna go ahead and scan that. And like I said, it's giving me an issue, but it should integrate into Home Assistant. And now we're just gonna transfer over to the computer and I'll show you what that looks like.
All right, so now that we're on the computer, we're gonna go ahead and go to devices and services. We're gonna go to thread and then configure, and you should see your uh, M100 here. We're gonna go ahead and do use router for Android and iOS credentials. And we should be good to go now. We should be able to add other devices that require a matter hub into Home Assistant. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna try to add this CASA plug, which is matter enabled. We're gonna try to add that into Home Assistant. So we're gonna go to add integration, add a matter device, no, it's new. Scan our QR code. And let's see if this works. And there we go. So that is, so I'm glad I got that set up. I don't have a lot of matter devices right now, but I am planning to pick up a few more in the future. And hopefully they integrate just as easily as the CASA plug did through matter. So looking forward to that. But let's talk about another area where the M100 does a really good job and that's on pricing. So if we see here right now, the M100 is available on Amazon for $20 on sale, regularly $25. And even at that full price, it is still cheaper than any of the SkyConnect options. The cheapest SkyConnect option right now is from Seed Studio, and that is $30, but this one's on back order. This is actually one of the ones that I did. I'm not gonna be seeing this device until sometime in July. I ordered it uh, about a month and a bit ago, so it is gonna take some time to get here. But this is the cheapest one at $30, but they have it currently still listed on back order. And then there are two other options that are around $45. So we have the Cloud Free Shop here, which is 45 bucks. They have plenty in stock. And then we also have the AmeriDroid. It's also around $45. They've got plenty in stock now. When I had originally ordered, none of them had them in stock. So I figured I would just buy it from the cheapest one, which is the you know, $30 is, you know, quite a bit different. The other two options are about 150% more in terms of cost than the one from Seed Studio. So I figured I'd may as well, I may as well wait. They're not charging very much to ship it up to Canada, which is nice. And yeah, so overall though, these are all $30, 45, 45. And the M100 is available for 25 regular price, currently down to 20 bucks. And I think that is a really, really good deal. Not only is it something that is available and you can get it within a couple of days because it's through Amazon, but the pricing is there. And as long as it works, which it has worked for me so far, then it's a really, really good option. And it's really nice to see more thread border router options available for us that are not an incredibly expensive device that you would need to add into your ecosystem. Now it is unfortunate that the only place I'm able to find the M100 right now is on Amazon in the US because Acara mentions that they are available at Newegg, Home Depot, Adorama, Best Buy, Walmart, GPS for us and Northern Tool and Equipment. But unfortunately, the M100 just isn't listed on any of those stores yet. It is relatively new to the US market before it was a China only product, I believe. So it is unfortunate that it's not available anywhere else, but I am looking forward to it being available at these other locations, hopefully still at that really good price of $25. And it would be an incredible option to just walk into a store and pick one up. Now, as I mentioned, I did pick up a ZBT-1 as well. So I would really like to know down in the comments if you guys would be interested in seeing me compare the integration of the ZBT-1 or the SkyConnect and the M100. I'm probably gonna keep the M100. I'm not gonna re be returning it anytime soon. And the ZBT-1 should be arriving sometime in July, hopefully. So if you're interested in that, let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to cover in terms of the ZBT-1, maybe versus the M100 or what have you, anything else. I'd really like to know what you guys would like to see with that. But with all that said, I'm really curious what you guys think about the M100. Are you looking for a more affordable thread border router? And with all the tariffs and all the situation that's going on, 
unable to pick up something like the ZBT-1. And really the only other options that I was able to find that were easily available, something that I didn't have to build myself, um, were things from the other major ecosystems like Google and Amazon and SmartThings. But the cheapest ones there, you know, started at around $100. And I really didn't want to invest that just to get a thread border router. So really curious what you guys think about this. Really curious about, you know, whether or not you're going to be picking up an M100 or you've already picked one up. Let me know down in the comment section below. I'd be really, really interested and curious to know what you guys think. But to kind of wrap things up, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribed, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can also leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any other videos relating to Home Assistant and all the stuff that I'm doing with that, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.